Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our next conversation is still talking on issues concerning crisis, um, but now in the southwest, and this is from the Mietiala, uh, the secretary of Mietiala, um, Al-Hassan Saleh, in an interview over the weekend, made statements saying that nobody can drive the Mietialan headsmen out of the Southwest and, of course, uh, reached out to and referred to rather the Constitution uh, that gives them the right to live and thrive in any part of the country. But other parts of the statements made, you know, of course, uh, said that the Mietial vowed to avenge the violence that was meted out on headsmen across Nigeria and in the Southwest. Uh, we've invited this morning uh, Chidi Omeja to speak with us uh, concerning this. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Great to have you on the program. I'm going to start with your, um, your reactions uh, to this. Yes, the Constitution gives them uh, the right to do business and to live in any part of the country, uh, but when you hear statements like these, you know, does it in, you know, in any way feel different from what the Constitution has given, or the rights Constitution has given these headsmen? Okay. First of all, let me say that um, we have to understand most people. Most people who come up to speak on issues like this have to understand that uh, in crisis management, that crisis communication is at the heart of it, and that in crisis communication, there's what we call conflict-sensitive communication. So most people who come out to speak on crisis, about crisis, or in you know, any crisis, sometimes they as I said, the crisis, they pour fuel into a raging fire. Now, most times when I hear that Mr. Saleh speak on national issues, I always ask myself, why do uh, Mietiala people allow a character like that to speak on their behalf? He has never been helpful in his utterances. He has always, you know, stoked fire and uh, you know, the issues. Um, people ought to moderate their utterances at a time like this. That having said, uh, having said that, uh, I think that in actual sense of it, every Nigerian has constitutional rights to live wherever they find themselves, wherever they want to live in, the, in any part of the country. That is given. But there's, a, there's a, 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 you know, a caveat to that. If you are going to live in any particular place, you have to obey the, the same constitution. You have to be lawful. You have to obey the, the extant laws in that particular area that you find yourself. You are going to constitute yourself a law unto yourself, and you are not going to re uh, resort to self-help. You must obey the laws, you must be peaceful, and you must listen to the, uh, the admonitions of the state government. Don't forget that state governments are the custodians of land use acts. They are, whatever they decide in, in on the land is what matters, and most times the actions are predicted on security um information if the if, if if governors find out that in a particular area there are crises occasioned by wrong use of those lands they have the right to say this is how we want to to, to to go about it and that is why i do not find anything wrong in any governor saying look you have to obey a particular you know uh you know set of rules that will guide rule of uh, you know security in that particular point in time. So I do not understand what that guy from Mayor Tyler is talking about. Uh, yes, we know that everybody has the right to live. But at a time like this, we have to listen to our government. They, 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 they let me let me just go further. The the statement, of course, goes to the extent of him saying that they will avenge uh, the violence uh, that, of course, uh, has gotten to uh, headers and uh, you know cartoeras across the country and in the southwest mostly. Um, would you describe that as insightful, you know, and, you know, would you expect that the Nigerian government should pay closer attention to um, um, Sally and, of course, the Mietiala at a time like this? Yes, I agree with you. The federal government and, of course, uh, order, you know, secu security structure must pay attention to such transits. We do not encourage self-help. Whatever uh, issues he identified, in whatever way his people have been treated, he has to follow the rules. He has to report to the, to the authority. And of course, I believe that, that this, the, uh, both federal and state governments will not sit by and allow people to, um, you know, to allow people to stoke uh, ethnic or inter-ethnic or religious uh, crisis. So I believe that the government, uh, as we speak, 
it should be on top of it. Don't forget that even last night, the federal government, uh, the state president, through his spokesman, Gaba uh, Hiyabu, said that the federal government are not going to sit back and allow, you know, uh, ethnic crisis to, um, you know, uh, fester in any part of the country. So uh, Saleh should, you know, should keep quiet for now. Uh, he's not going to do anything because he does not have the right to uh, to, to self help. It's not it's not it's not prescribed in our constitution. We have law enforcement agents constitutionally mandated to deal with security infractions in any part of the country. If everybody begins to engage in self-help, then there will be anarchy. There will be no, there will be no country left for us. Don't forget that there, there are something that's also living in, this, in, the, in the north. And they are, they are, I want to believe that they are obeying the laws of the land there. If they are not obeying the laws of the land, by now the whole world would have known. So anybody saying that they want to take law into their hands are not you know, being fair to this government and are not being fair to the country. At this point in time, all we want now is for every person to take it easy, you know, calm down. At the time that the country is going through this kind of tempestuous period, we do not want people to speak, you know, necessarily and then carelessly. And at the end of the day, you know, they hit up the polity and then, uh, you know, um, put art foil in a raging fire. We do not want right. what we call uh, reprisal attacks across the country. Uh, it's not, it's not what is not important. It's not, it's not needed at this time. What we need now is peace and security. And leaders must understand that their speeches, their utterances, have a long way in, you know, uh, you know, uh, causing, you know, uh, 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 this crisis. So, Saleh have to calm down. All right, Mr. Amoje, it seems that there are two different laws, you know, about this issue regarding freedom of movement. You know, one aspect of the, of the Constitution talks about, you know, freedom of movement. Every Nigerian can, you know, move freely within the country. And then there's another part that Femi Falano SAN pointed out one time when uh, Governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akirudulu, came out to say that open grazing is banned in the country. And uh, Femi Falano quoted a part of the Constitution that said that, you know, no one can graze in the forests except the permission of the governor of that particular state, you know, where the forest is located. So do you think that maybe it's these, I know, these issues that seem to be, you know, opposing that may give room for, you know, deferring opinion on this issue? Because now Miatela is claiming the constitution, you know, they have freedom of movement and no one can chase them out. But then there's this other aspect of the constitution that says you cannot, you know, graze your cattle in the forest except with the permission of the governor. I think that uh, at least, at, you know, given this kind of uh, conflicting signals from the various, uh, you know, law interpreters, they need to. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I think that uh, this is a time we expect clarity of thought from legal luminaries, and of course, even the attorney general of the country should be able to come out and speak, not you know, in a way, in a way that every side of the of the of the party of the parties uh, will understand it and not see it really meaning into anything. So I, I I cannot I don't know much about law because I'm not a lawyer, but I know that uh, in times like this, when the crisis is brewing, that there's a need for those who are expert in that particular area to speak clearly without being partisan in any way, any way, or any, any way or form. Um, I am believing, having said that really, I am believing that uh, uh, Nigeria have a, a law, have a constitution, and the constitution is the grand law, and whatever constitution states is what must abide on. I believe that everybody has a right to, uh, any part, to live in any part of this country, but I also believe that Wherever you find yourself, you must be peaceful. If you are not peaceful, the state, the, go the governor in charge of that particular state, has a personal, you know, role to make sure that you you, are, you you obey the law. You can't come to somebody's state or domain and begin to, uh, you know, uh, constitute yourself into grave uh, crisis or you know, be um, lawless, be unlawful unto yourself. No, it's not acceptable. We are okay. we are we are decent human beings, and we are, we are ruled by a set of laws. And you know, I, I do not understand this idea of uh, you know people taking laws to their hand, people going around saying that grazing with uh, with uh, AK forty seven flung up behind them uh, is is scary. Okay, you know, Mr. So Mijay, I, uh, see, I need I need to ask this question because really, can these herdsmen be compelled to leave any part of the country? Say it again. Can the herdsmen be compelled to leave any part of the country? Yes, violent herdsmen 
can be compared to live in. But if they are violent, if they are breaking laws, this, the, whoever is in charge of that particular area, they are, have a right to say, look, you are not going to be in my domain and cause havoc. You have no right to, you know, to come to a particular, a particular domain and be alone to yourself. What, what, I think what we're saying is that, look, people have a right to live. It, it, if you're a farmer, for instance, and you invested all you have to, to farm, and somebody comes in with a, a head of cow, cat food, and then graze on them, destroy everything, you would not be happy. You would, you would want to, you know, uh, seek justice. So I, what I'm thinking is that, look, Mr. Hedge men have to understand that nobody's against them, but if they're, if they're begin to um you know cause crisis to people are begin to graze on people's farmland those people have a right to, to, to protest and and, and and i'm saying that that even those who are protesting must also uh, be mindful of laws we are not we're trying to say we're, we're not going to encourage people taking laws into their hands because that is a recipe for 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 crisis and chaos all right so um, those guys who are saying they have been, i think they are they only ask violent ones to leave if you are not violent, you are then you are free to stay. But if you are violent and you are constituted constitute yourself into a big nuisance, then you must leave. Okay, let, let's let's also it. bring in the the <laughs> meeting a few a few weeks ago. There was a meeting between Mietiala and the governors of the Southwest. The, the meeting, of course, was uh, aimed at uh, solving this crisis that has uh, taken over parts of the Southwest. Uh, do you think that that meeting from recent events failed? And uh, where else do you think that the government from the state and the federal level could have done better uh, to, of course, uh, uh, stop you know, it degenerating into the level that it's gotten to now? Because it is some level of audacity you know, that makes someone bold enough to say that we will avenge uh, the um, um, killing of headsmen or any, any attacks on headsmen. Yeah, clearly you can see that that particular <laughs> You know, you have not, you have not achieved anything because the crisis, instead of abating, is even increasing. So, but at, at this point in time, this is the time I, I expect the, both the federal government, uh, the government, federal government, and its uh, agencies to stamp their feet to and to ensure that peace reigns. If not allow crisis to snowball into, I mean, this kind of conflict to snowball into crisis of, or you know, of um, unimaginable proportion. This is the time to nip it on the board. This is the time to stop this crisis from going further. We can't allow ethnic crisis to raise its head now. We have, we have war we are waging in the Northeast against the insurgents and terrorists. We have war, the war we are waging against bandits in the, in the Northwest. We have war we are waging against uh, you know, uh, kidnappers in North Central and across the country. We do not need to open new theaters of international operation again in this country. We don't need to operate new theater of wars again. We have to stop this. Where is the national security advisor? I, I, I want him to stop his feet now. This is time for him to act if he's not acting. Right. Where is the intelligence community right. in this country? This is time for them to act. We must stop this crisis from snowballing because it is, it is not good for the country. We don't need further crisis. Right. We don't need any front in this country. We have enough in our hands already. That's what I'm trying right. to say. All right. Um, we are, uh, of course, out of time once again. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, we will be closely monitoring the um, events in the Southwest with regards to the the government, farmers and headers, and, of course, the peaceful um, um, uh, people of the Southwest. And if we, of course, would love to speak with you again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate, I appreciate that. All right. Uh, stay with us. There's still more crisis that we're talking about this Security morning. Security issues <laughs> it's, everywhere. It seems like, you know, the whole of this Monday morning has been used to talk about, you know, issues with regard to security and heightened tensions. We're now moving to your state where the OPC is, uh, the Old White People's Congress, rather, is asking the federal government to investigate the crisis that uh, took place there a few days ago. The reaction from the government of your state also and the vice president, uh, which has, uh, who rather has condemned the activities of those uh, troublemakers. Uh, we'll talk about that right after this short break. Stay with us here on Plus TV Africa.